gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. We have the capability to make the world's first bionic Victoria 2. Better, stronger, faster. Hello everyone, welcome to a video where I am going to be talking about a very, very interesting topic for you. I'm basically going to be putting forward and making the case for an idea, exploring whether or not this is possible, looking at past examples of very similar things that have been done, and just generally opening a conversation to see what other people think about this. First of all, please do give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't, and consider supporting the channel. If you already know a lot more than me about the topics I'm about to discuss, including game development, modding and all that, please don't go too harsh on me in any corrections that you need to make. I've done quite a bit of research for this video, and I'm trying to be as accurate as I possibly can and fair towards any other people or projects that I'm talking about but it's not my field of expertise so as you start to understand what I'm talking about in this video you might start to realise the implications of this and the huge potential that there is here in whatever form this idea might take or has in some cases already taken which I'm going to show you. This is about everyone's favourite grand strategy game by Paradox, Victoria 2 which is the game that I've mainly put on this channel. It's broken, it's flawed, it's got a great vision that was implemented well in some cases and badly in other cases but we love it all the same especially what it can offer in multiplayer. I will of course also be referring to Victoria 3. The whole experience of Victoria 3 being announced, released, turning out the way it is, is one of the reasons that I'm looking towards this idea or that I've been greatly inspired and see the potential of this. You may think Victoria 3 is good or bad on its own terms, however it has completely departed from Victoria 2 and everything about it, and Paradox as a game developer I really just don't care for them very much anymore. They used to make games that I like, now they don't. They used to be a nice little passionate development team, now they're a giant soulless corporation, 10% by Tencent. And they're not funny. I've been critical, I've been very negative about Victoria 3. Over these past few months I've deconstructed it, but now it's time to actually be constructive and put forward something better. Take all the negativity and turn it into something positive. And by the way, if you disagree with me about Victoria 3 and you really like that game, go away. No, I'm joking. What I'm talking about in this video is something that you can absolutely get behind as well. As long as you refrain from suggesting any features from Victoria 3 to go into this, then we're fine. Anyway, what am I actually talking about? Well, to start illustrating my point, here's some background game play of something different from Victoria. This is Open TTD, that stands for Transport Tycoon Deluxe. Transport Tycoon is a game that came out in 1994, three years before I was even born. The following year the Deluxe version came out which was an improved and expanded version of the original game. After that the developer moved away from Transport Tycoon and made Roller Coaster Tycoon, which many of you will also have heard of. Now I'm really skimming over the history of this and there's probably a lot more details, but basically during the time the developer of Transport Tycoon went off to do Roller Coaster Tycoon instead, someone decided that they they were going to reverse engineer Transport Tycoon Deluxe of about eight years ago. By reverse engineering I mean taking the game, trying to figure out how it works and how it's coded and all that, and trying to rebuild it from the ground up as a free open source project because, you know, actually commercialising it would probably be illegal. The main reasons for doing this reverse engineering seem to be just making general improvements on the game, like a better user interface, giving the game better potential to add new modifications and user created stuff, to allow the game to operate on different systems, and, now here's the kicker, to create better functioning multiplayer. Keep that one in mind. You already know where I'm going with this. So OpenTTD began development in 2003. In 2004 the original developer of Transport Tycoon came back from making the Roller Coaster Tycoon games to make a spiritual successor to Transport Tycoon that had come out 10 years before and that was Chris Sawyer's Locomotion, a game that doesn't seem to have had a great reception. Mixed reviews, by no means a bad game, but clearly not liked as much as the predecessor. As the years went by the OpenTTD project went from strength to strength, has been in constant development even to this present day and it is generally just a very much adored game that many people love to play including myself now as I've done a few streams on it with its very well functioning multiplayer that I haven't had any instability problems with in game. It's set up a little bit like Victoria 2 in that you actually have to port forward but then it also has its own public servers list and you can set up your own dedicated server if you wish. It even has this old fashioned thing called an in-game chat. Only people born in the 90s know what that is. Now I'm going to give you a little overview with a couple of examples of the track record of teams of modders from the Paradox community working with Paradox to create games using their engine and published by them. I originally had some very simple basic information about this sort of thing, but I read more and more and found that there is a very dark rabbit hole when it comes to this sort of project with Paradox. So the point I'm going to make in this section is why it's actually a very very good thing that there has never been and will never be a project involving a modding team cooperating with Paradox to make a Darkest Hour-like project with Victoria. It's something that I've seen 
demand for in the past, at least before Victoria 3, and an idea that I've seen floated around, but it never happened and I think we dodged a bullet. Darkest Hour was a game built on Hearts of Iron 2 by a modding team from the Paradox community, with Paradox licensing out the Europa engine for them to use. Darkest Hour is a great game, a very popular one. I think it's fair to say that it's better than Hearts of Iron 2, but it was built from Hoi 2 and came out a few years after it. The important aspect of this is the Europa engine. Hoi 2 was the last Paradox game released on that engine and it's what Darkest Hour was made from. The key point here is that Victoria 2 is on the clouds of its engine, and so is every game since EU3, although different versions of it, and they now have a new thing called Jomini, if that's how you're supposed to pronounce it, which is to help people mod their more recent games and it's sort of like a layer above the clouds of its engine. It's impossible to talk about this without pointing out the huge irony that Victoria 3 was built on an engine called Clausewitz, named after a Prussian military theorist who massively influenced warfare in the Victorian period, especially for that highly militaristic nation that launched many offensive wars during this time. And then Jomini is named after another general who was active in the Victorian period and highly influential. If you search both their names on YouTube, you will find military video essays an hour and 40 minutes long about them. A more appropriate name for any engine to develop Victoria 3 on would be the John Lennon engine. The community projects that use games on the Europa engine turned out pretty well. Darkest Hour isn't the only one, there are some others too. But then came Hearts of Iron 3, the clouds of its engine, and East vs West. Let's not even talk about that Magna Mundi case, that's the rabbit hole I mentioned at the start of this section. Let's focus on East vs West, which is the last time that Paradox ever licensed out their engine for another team to work with. They've certainly worked very closely with modders, or hired modders, but they stopped doing this after East vs West. I'm surprised I can't find any other videos talking about the development and cancellation of these projects. This is prime video essay territory. I'm just doing a cursory overview in this video, but maybe I'll talk about them more in the future. Anyway, East vs West faced severe problems in development, huge delays, the development team didn't seem to have anything very on playable by the deadlines Paradox gave them, and ultimately Paradox cancelled the project. Funnily enough, one of the supposed reasons that East vs West was delayed and they couldn't make the deadline was that they were trying to implement the Victoria 2 economy, and that caused all sorts of problems. Well, if anyone could successfully make a Victoria 2 economy, it's the Victoria 2 modders themselves in the community that I know. They really do know how Victoria 2 works better than anyone at Paradox at this point. That's been a bit of a running joke, but now it's time to actually prove that it's true. And if it's an open source project, not commercialised, nothing to do with Paradox, then there's absolutely no pressure or deadlines, even if it turns out to be extremely difficult, taking a lot of work, encountering lots of problems, that's fine. It's not going to get cancelled because of that. Just have a break. And in general, Paradox's overbearing corporate hands are away from the whole project. They're not going to pay anyone to shill it. Their Discord moderators won't shut down any criticism of it. We're not going to get bombarded by unfunny jokes. A real passionate community-driven project featuring the boundless human spirit in opposition to ruthless, soulless corporatism. And the downside is we won't have access to the Clausewitz engine, which if anything is a really, really good thing, because no one will end up in a mental asylum. No, but the real reason is that every game on that damn engine goes out of sync in multiplayer. I have absolutely no idea if it would be possible to make non-desynchronizing multiplayer in any prospective open source Victoria-like game. We're so accustomed to desynchronization in Paradox games that there's a sort of Stockholm Syndrome where we think, well if Paradox isn't able to fix this then I guess it's just an inherent problem that they can't fix. They've done their best. Europa Universalis 4 and Hearts of Iron 4 certainly do have very good workarounds for desynchronization, hot joining and resynchronization, but with Crusader Kings 3, Imperator and Victoria 3, they've actually regressed significantly. There's no more resynchronizing. But the main point is, if desynchronization is a deep problem embedded within the clouds of its engine, then by working outside of it, then we have a chance to make something that works. I don't know if we can, but we can certainly try. The people who know more about this technical stuff will be able to answer better than I can. So you've got a general understanding of the idea that I'm putting forward, and I've shown you the great example of OpenTTD, as well as the history of this sort of thing with Paradox. And you might be thinking, well this whole idea sounds great in theory, but it seems like a massive impossible task. Well that's where you're wrong. I'm about to show you some existing projects and things that have already been done that go directly to what I'm talking about, which is an open source, community made, Victoria or Victoria-like game built from the ground up. I'm going to show you three examples, and the third one will definitely blow your mind. First of all, here is a project called Symphony of Empires. You can see what it is from its own description there, a free open source real-time grand strategy game in the Victorian era. This seems to be quite a big project, its website lists 13 different contributors, compared to some projects I've seen that are just a one-man army. This question and answer shows how close it is to Victoria 2. As you can see, based on Victoria 2, but very different. This is definitely not a recreation or reverse engineering of Victoria 2, this is its own project, inspired by Vic 2 and different. Whether or not these differences are going to be improvements on Victoria 2, we don't know yet. There isn't enough going on in this extremely early alpha version yet to 
judge that, but what they have so far looks like a great template that they're going to work from. I like the look of the map, it feels really big and grand, which is exactly what you want in a grand strategy game simulating the world. And moving around the map and zooming in and out is really smooth. Definitely will check up on this as it gets developed. And yes, it does have army stacks that you can micromanage and move around. Moving them does make the game crash for me at this stage, but that is quite literally still better than Victoria 3. You can find all the links to this project in the description, including their Discord. I'll be watching their career with great interest. The next project I'm going to show you is one called Bismarck 1. Judging from the available information and what the maker of this has said, in terms of its closeness to Victoria 2, this one is further away than the last project I showed you, but still roughly inspired by Victoria 2, set in the same era, and aims to incorporate some aspects of it. There are some very ambitious plans for this project, which, if this person can actually implement them, sound great on paper, especially his idea of an improving AI that learns from players and gets better at fighting wars. At least he's trying rather than removing all AI micromanagement like they did with Victoria 3. But like I said, very ambitious plans and whether any of this can actually be implemented in practice is the question. It's not very far along in development at all, so Symphony of Empires probably a lot more hope for that one. Also, it's not open source. Again, relevant links are in the description, check it out. Alright, now here's the moment we've all been waiting for. If this didn't exist, I don't think I could actually make this video. Or I could, but I probably wouldn't have as much hope that what I'm talking about is even remotely possible. Alright, have a look at this. What you're looking at is something built entirely from the ground up by one man. This was an unfinished project by Schombert to recreate Victoria 2. He hasn't worked on this for a while, but I've been in contact with him, and as a matter of fact, he's actually advising the Symphony of Empires team. He told me, and this is a quote from him, My basic goal with the project was to make a version of Victoria 2 with some of the things that annoyed me fixed. So he made this, and uploaded several videos showcasing it on his YouTube channel. But this was all done in 2019, I'm a bit late to the party. I've actually been aware of this for all these years, and so have many people in the Victoria 2 community. I don't know! I don't know what I'm doing! What ah! Shit! 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 Oh Fuck me! Oh Fuck me! Oh but as I said in the introduction to the video, it took the experience of Victoria 3 for me to have the obvious realisation that not only might it be possible to remake a Victoria 2 faithfully or take it in a different direction, but that that work has already been done to this huge extent right here by one legendary man. So Schombert's project was generally to recreate Victoria 2, but make quite a lot of different changes to fix things that he personally didn't like about the game. So he's implemented his own map projection, which is a really big topic that we're going to have to face at some point. And he's also mentioned a few other things like a completely reworked economy and he also told me that as he was making it he found more and more things that he wanted to diverge from the original Victoria 2 and fix and that's understandable because I feel the same way every time I play the game and no matter what the work he's done is mind-blowing however in my personal opinion if this project in general if an open Victoria project was to proceed what I would like to see is a faithful recreation of Victoria 2 as far as possible and I know that might be very weird I mean why would you want to actually recreate bugs that are in Victoria 2 but once that is nailed down to some extent we have a Victoria 2, then people can start to diverge and make different changes based on what they would like to fix, maybe through mods. Let's just get the basics right and then go off and make our weird and wonderful changes like making the map projection go into space. But I don't know anything about the technical sides of these things, that's just generally the direction I might like to see things take. So like I said, this project was from 2019 and Sean Butter stopped working on it, but the most important thing is that his project is completely open source and he is totally happy for anyone else to take it, work on it, or build something off of it. I'm going to quote him again, all of the source code is online and it has a permissive open source license so maybe someone else will finish it one day. Well let me put it to you everyone who's watching this video that that someone who's going to finish it one day could be you or the entire Victoria 2 modding community. We can put together a team or maybe God of Cheese will come back. Who knows? I don't know what will happen with this whole project. I'm just putting forward the idea in this video, taking a few different items like these projects and the examples I showed earlier and putting them into context together to show what's possible. Imagine combining this with the general format and history of open TTD and you get the potential. This video isn't a mobilisation yet, we're only doing the sort of justifying a Cass's belly stage. Schombert's channel is of course linked in the description so you can see this and many other examples. He deserves great credit for doing this. Don't let Paradox find him though. To sum up this video in one basic statement, if Paradox can't improve Victoria 2 or make a faithful good sequel to it, 
then let's just do it ourselves. We have the technology. We have the amazing Victoria 2 modding community who knows the game better than Paradox at this point. And even now, 12 years after Victoria 2 was released, they're still coming out with mind-blowing mods. Not to mention my experience within the multiplayer community and all the different features, utilities and things that have been added to multiplayer mods. As I was making this video, Zombie Freak came out with a mod for the executable file of Victoria 2 that changes the possible roles in battles. You can't normally mod this, so he's gone into some really complex alternate way of changing the game. At this point, we just need to remake the game. Then we can have an option in the settings to set the min and max dice rolls. It's time to release modders from the limited stuff that you can change within Victoria 2. Let them get their hands on stuff that they couldn't possibly have touched before, such as the AI. The AI has always been recognised as one of the worst things about Victoria 2 and any other Paradox game, particularly when it comes to micromanaging wars, which is one of the reasons they went off and did what they did with Victoria 3. Now, I have no idea how possible it is to actually improve the AI, but if you ask me who I had more faith in to do that, Paradox, or the Victoria 2 modding community, there's no competition. For example, over in Europa Universalis 4, there was a dev diary a little while ago in September 2021. This is Johan talking about some work on the AI. Then he gives a shout out to an EU4 modder who gave them a good suggestion, but also apparently wrote the Paradox AI better than Paradox itself. According to Johan, who is also one of the major developers of Victoria 2, this here is from a game that is still in active development. The AI code for Victoria 2 is probably in a filing cabinet somewhere long since forgotten. Improving the AI is just one example of somewhere where an open Victoria 2 project could have appeal way beyond the current Victoria 2 community and potentially bring back loads of people who have been put off the game over the years. I've got plenty anecdotal evidence from the comments of my videos from people saying that they enjoy watching my videos but don't actually want to play Victoria 2 because of all the problems with it, especially in multiplayer. The modern community arguably already carries Paradox. They fix half the problems with their games and in the case of Crusader Kings 3 particularly, they actually make the content for it. It's time to break out of Paradox's sphere of influence. We know the recipe now, we don't need them anymore. They clearly have no interest in Victoria 2 or the Victoria 2 community. They could have added grades of coal to the game. Instead, they're working on implementing the ability to splash water. When hiring people to work on the latest game in the Victoria franchise, they look towards the brightest minds of the Hearts of Iron 4 modding community, not the Victoria 2 one. And that's the only point I'm making about this. I don't know or care about anything to do with TNO. As we know, Vic 3 doesn't resemble Vic 2 in almost any way. They stole the economy of Hoi 4, which is a war game, adding the construction queue and civ factories, all under an engine named Clausewitz. It's time to get away from this clown company and achieve something truly better and great. I hope you come out of this video feeling really positive and inspired about the potential future of this project. Turn the doom you feel about Victoria 3 into hope and positivity about Open Victoria 2, if and when that project actually begins. Although, as I showed you, we're already halfway there. And don't forget to use the example of Open TTD to prove how this can be an absolutely amazing success. Darkest Hour shows that this sort of thing has been done before with Paradox games, but East vs West shows that we shouldn't work with Paradox. Not that we had the option anyway. We also have two very interesting projects to look out for, Symphony of Empires and Bismarck 1. I said earlier that I want this video to start a conversation about this Open Victoria 2 project. This is just the initial discussion and idea, I don't know how it's actually going to work. But if we get closer to actually doing something, I'm just going to say now very early that this is going to require organisation and leadership so it doesn't go off in loads of different random directions. There will very likely be quite strong disagreements. I want there to be some hope here but don't get too complacent. I suggest that we will probably need to create one single discord to put the whole project and keep it together. Probably best to not make that my discord but for now in the early stage where we're just talking about it, you can come and continue the conversation on my Discord. As well as in the comments of this video, I'm really curious to see what everyone has to say about this, whether you're just a viewer, a Victoria 2 modder, someone who plays multiplayer, someone who plays single player, but especially people with actual experience and knowledge about this sort of topic. And also, like the video, subscribe to me if you aren't already, share this video to people in places that you think might be interested. Consider supporting me by joining my Patreon or joining the channel membership, and have a nice day, goodbye.